In this tutorial, we will see manual definition of general welds and edge contact in IDEA Statica connection. The welds of many operations in IDEA Stati CA are applied automatically. But sometimes we need to apply them manually. So why do we need a manual application? Let me show it. In this cut operation, we have mainly four options and these are fillet weld, front side, fillet weld, rear side, double fillet weld and butt weld. So if you select fillet weld, front side for flanges, you will see welds at the inside of both flanges. And if you select rear side, the welds will be at the outside. But I don't have an option to have welds at the top face of both flanges. For some kind of these cases, we need manual definition of welds. Moreover, in some special conditions, you cannot generate special welds with using only automatic operations. So in this case, let's deactivate these welds in cut operation, and I will add new welding operation. Click on operation and then select weld or contact operation. Now I have it. As you see, there are a few fields in the data window and it is quite simple. We can select edge to surface or edge to edge in the placement field. Edge to surface means, the weld will be on the edge of the beam and the surface of the column. On the other hand, edge to edge can be used for the weld between the flange of this beam and the flange of another adjoining beam. You can change the type as weld or contact for both placements. After the selection of the type and placement of the operation, now we need to specify the edge. The edge determined by the flange of the beam. So first, we will select member in this line and then we select the top flange of M2. After that if you switch to the transparent view, you will see some numbers on the edges of the top flange. As you see, it has to be 1, and we can write 1 to the edge index. If we had chosen web as member or plate here, we might need to use different values as edge index. For example, it can be 3 or 1 as you see. If we want to weld only the lower part of the web, under the opening, we need to select M1 as the second plate, and the bottom flange. And if I change index as 3, the weld will be on the upper part of the web. We can generate more than one welding operation, and specify different parts of the connection to create new welds. For example, if you want to generate welds on here both the 1 and 3 edges, write 1 enter a space and then write 3. And you will have the weld on both edges. Or let's copy the weld operation and, Select M2 top flange here, then select M1 bottom flange here. As you see, the welds created only on the intersection of the top flange and the column. It is because of the weld 1 operation that the weld appears on the web. Unticking this box will remove the weld on the web. You can also change the position of the weld as fillet weld, front fillet weld, rear, double fillet weld or butt weld, as I mentioned at the beginning. As I said at the beginning, if we want to see weld on top of both flanges we can copy the last weld operation and select M2, as the first plate. These welds created by default, and we can change the type of these welds as partial. In this way, I can specify some offsets for the beginning or the end of the welds. Also we can specify intermittent welds from here. Via this option, you can change the lengths of the welds, and the gaps between welds. In brief, in this way we can specify some kind of special weld such as partial weld and intermittent weld. Let's take a brief look at the partial and intermittent weld usages. For example, choose partial and weld 1 then write 30 to offset 1. Consider the web as two segments and the offset 1 is taken from the lowest point in each segment. By writing 30 to offset 2, you can see that the weld is removed at the opposite distance. Now let's select intermittent in weld 1. Here we have four lines of features and offset 1 and offset 2 are the same with the partial option. Additionally, the intermittent option allows you to specify the length of the weld segments and the gap between them. For instance, I write 5 to length and 10 to gap. And this is how it is, as we can see. Another important feature of this operation is contact. Let's uncheck weld 2 and weld 3, then add a new weld or contact operation. Select contact in this phase and select M2 top flange as the first plate and M1 bottom flange as the second plate. So when we switch to the transparent view, we can easily see the contact as a red rectangular but we cannot see this contact in solid representation. 
because it is not a component or entity. To see the effects, we can assign some loads to this model, and we can see the results. In order to do this, add two load effects here. We add 70 knm moment around my in load effect 1, and then add minus 70 knm moment around my. Then calculate the model. After that click on check, to see the behavior. Click on equivalent stress, mesh, deformed, then click on this drop down list and select current and switch to the side view. Now we can see equivalent stress and deformations. If I exaggerate the effects from here in load effect 1, at the bottom part of the beam, the bottom flange is colliding with the column. We can easily see that. Because there is no contact in this area. As a result, the calculations will not be exactly correct, due to this unrealistic situation. These unrealistic calculations provide us an incomplete analysis. But if we check the other load effect results, pay attention the place of contact at the beam does not pass through the column. Consequently in this case, we have completed the analysis and the connection does check correctly.